We now talked about the very first and early convolutional neural network. This convolutional neural network was used to recognize handwritten digits in images. It was invented by Jan Lecken and others at AT&T Bell Labs back in the early 90s. Lenet, as its name, has two parts. The first part is a block of convolutional layers, and the second part is a block of fully connected ones. Let's take a look at the uh, architecture of uh, Lenet. The convolutional layer uses a 5x5 five five window. and followed by a sigmoid activation function. There are six kernels of filters of the size of 5x5. Five five. So eventually, at the output, what we have, we have six channels, and each is of the size of 28 by 28. So there are six channels along uh, this dimension. The next layer is average pooling. This layer uses a 2x2 two two kernel. And the stride is 2. This is a stride. And this is the size of the kernel. So for each channel in the output of the convolutional layer, we have one kernel. So as a result, we have six of them, which creates uh, six channels in the output. Continuing in that same manner is the next uh, convolutional layer. The size of the window or the kernel is the same uh, 5 by 5 and there are 16 kernels or filters which then creates uh, 16 up, um, channels in the output. 16 and each of them has a size of 10 by 10 and eventually uh, in this block the block of uh, convolutional layer we have for uh, average pooling the size of the kernel also um, is 2 by 2 and the stride is also 2 this is the size of the kernel and the stride is also 2. So because of the pulley window has the same shift as the stride then the areas covered by the pulling window sliding on each input do not overlap. So the pooling actually performs uh, down sampling. On the top of average pooling we have two dense layers, two uh, fully connected layers of the size 120 nodes and 80 nodes. The dense layers use the sigmoid activation. So this use sigmoid And that is also used in a sigmoid. It may work better if we use a, a rectified uh, linear unit uh, activation. However, in the 90, uh, this activation uh, didn't exist yet. 
The last layer has 10 nodes for 10 outputs and number 10 here is the number of output classes 4 digits uh, from 0 to 9 The next architecture after LENET is AlexNet This architecture was introduced in uh, 2012 by Alex uh, Kuchowski AlexNet won the ImageNet Large Scale Visual Recognition Challenge that year. The author of it adds three convolutional layers compared to LENET to make it a eight-layer convolutional neural network. So let's compare the two architectures a little bit. The left side shows the uh, architecture of LENET and the right side shows the architecture of AlexNet. Uh, we may notice that the size of the images in AlexNet is uh, much larger, which is 100 224 by 224 and this is because uh, AlexNet deals with images in the image net uh, data set of which the size of the images uh, is much larger than the size of the images in uh, this is MNIST the data set for uh, handwritten digits so because of the size of the images is much larger the convolutional layer use a larger window of the size 11 uh, by 11 and the stride is also larger which is 4 compared to LENET uh, using a uh, stride of uh, 2. In LENET, uh, max pooling is used instead of average pooling. Also, there are many more layer, no, many more channels. There are 96 channels compared to just uh, 6 channels in LENET. In the next convolutional uh, layer, the size of the window is 5 by 5, as uh, same as the uh, window in LENET. The number of uh, channels is much larger, 256 compared to just 16. Again, Max pooling is used instead of um, average pooling. On top of it, we can see the uh, uh, three additional convolutional layers. Each has uh, 384 channels. The size of the window in each layer is 3 by 3. The three convolutional layers of followed by the max pooling layer and the uh, fully connected layers just like uh, what we see in LENET the number of class or output is much larger we have uh, 1000 compared to 10 uh, in LENET the VGG network proposed by Simon Yan and Yisemin in the visual geometry group has five convolutional blocks in which the first two blocks use a single convolutional layer. The next three blocks use a double convolutional layer. The first block has 64 output channels but later blocks 
double the number of channels until reaching 512 channels. Because the network uses 8 convolutional layers and 3 fully connected layers, the total number of layers is 11. So that is in the name of the network, uh, VGG11. This slide uh, provides some more details. The configuration on the right side shows the fiber locks as mentioned. And here we see that in the first block and the second block, a single convolutional layer is used. But uh, in the next three blocks, we have a uh, double convolutional uh, layer. There are five blocks. Five blocks, and as a total number of uh, layers or width layers is eleven. Okay. This is because we have uh, eight uh, convolutional layers in here, as well as the uh, uh, fully connected layers on the top of it. So this configuration, the configuration, configuration on the left side is the configuration for VGG um, 11 with uh, 11 layers and the configuration on the right side with 18 uh, layers is uh, VGG 19. So this is VGG 19 for 19 layers and this is VGG 11 for 11 layers. After this point we have seen that architectures such as LENET, AlexNet and VGG extract the spatial features through a sequence of convolutions and pooling layers and then do the uh, post-processing uh, steps using the fully connected layers. The improvements upon Lynette by AlexNet and VGG are basically about how AlexNet and VGG can widen and deepen the two modules. In these architectures, if we use the fully connected layers earlier than the very last stage, it could destroy the spatial structure of the data. The network, in network or NIN for short, architecture is uh, proposed by Lin, Chen and Yan. And that was back to 2030. NIN blocks offer an alternative based on a very simple insight to use an, N, an MLP on the channels for each pixel uh, separately. This is the basic uh, NIN block in which we can see there is a convolution uh, layer followed by two one by one convolutional layer. The one by one convolutional layers act as a fully connected layer. The left side of the figure shows the VGG architecture for comparison. Convolutional layers within NIN use three convolution window shapes 11 by 11 5 by 5 and 3 by 3. Each NIN block is followed by a maximum pooling layer with a stride of 2 
and a window show of 3 by 3 which is what we see here the special thing in NAN design is that it avoids dense connection entirely and instead instead it uses a block with a number of output channels equal to the number of label classes and eventually a global average polling layer to average all the elements in each channel for direct use uh, for classification now we move on to the next architecture namely inception version 1 also called google nanet this architecture was proposed by Jerry in 2014 so there was a question when designing the convolutional layer which size should we use 1 by 1 3 by 3 or 4 uh, 5 by 5 or even larger We could see that the first three paths use convolutional layers with the window size of 1 by 1, 3 by 3, and 5 by 5. Also, the middle two paths performs 1 by 1 convolution. This is to reduce the number of input channels so reduce the uh, model complexity the last path which is the fourth path use a 3x3 mice uh, pooling layer and followed by 1x1 one one convolutional layer which is to change the number of channels all the four paths use padding so that the input and the output uh, would have the same height and width and eventually the output from each path is concatenated to uh, others to be the input to the next layer so looking at the whole architecture we see uh, a stack of the total 9 inception blocks we have uh, 2 here five here and two there as well as a global average pooling layer which is here there are maximum pooling layers in between uh, inception blocks which is here 
in there in there uh, which are used for reducing the uh, dimensionality the first part is very much like uh, in uh, AlexNet and LenNet how blocks are used is inherited from VGG the global average pooling layer is to avoid uh, a stack of uh, fully connected layers this slide shows uh, some more description regarding the blocks in the architecture the next architecture is ResNet ResNet is based on the Taylor expansion for functions it decomposes functions into a linear term and a complex nonlinear term Look at the blocks. On the left side is a regular block, and on the right side is a residual block. The difference is that we can short circuit the convolutions. So, this part is a short circuit. The function after the sum is L of x plus x. The shape of the output from here and from there have to be the same so that the outputs can be added together. If you want to change the number of channels you can add an additional one by one convolutional layer. The block on the left side adds the input and the output together before the nonlinearity. On the right side, a one by one convolution is used to change the number of channels and resolution as we can see here. And that is the difference between the two uh, blocks. ResNet uses batch normalization which is to adjust the output using the mean and standard deviation of the mini batch. So the batch normalization of X basically is adjusted by the mean and standard deviation of the mini batch. Uh, gamma and beta are just uh, some coefficients. And this is how uh, to use the uh, mini batch to estimate the mean and the standard deviation. ResNet 18. The number 18 here is for the number of layers. There are four convolutional layers in each module, not including the one by one convolutional layer, plus uh, one convolutional layer, and also the fully connected layer. The total number of layers is 18. So, as you can see, um, there are three blocks here, just like this. And we have four convolutional layers in each, so that makes 12. And four more convolutional layers uh, there, that makes 16. Plus the uh, first convolutional layer and the fully connected layer, uh, then that make uh, 18 layers in total. Now we talked about ResNet. ResNet decomposes functions into a linear term and a complex nonlinear term. But what if we need more than two terms? So this is uh, offered by Huang in 2016. The block configuration for ResNet is on the left and for DanceNet is on the right. In ResNet, outputs are added, but in DanceNet, outputs are concatenated. In the end, all the functions are combined in an MLP to reduce the number of features. The figure shows the dance conditions in DanceNet. There are two main components in DanceNet including dense blocks and transition layers. A dense block defines how the inputs and outputs are concatenated and the transition layer controls the number of channels. 
so that it is not too large.